good evening everyone good evening ma'am uh, good evening all the participants i would like to welcome you to our uh, siddharth college law webinars youtube channel uh, it's been a great journey since we have started our law webinars we have got immense and very good response from all of you even from the speakers itself uh, and uh, i'm sure everyone is enjoying the, our sessions and today's session is also a very good session and a very good speaker also i am very much sorry because of some technical issues and some personal problem our uh, principal sandhya doke ma'am is not able to join us today in this webinar but uh, i am your host uh, arun kumar khedia gs of student council and rajkiran jadhav that is the president of gs uh, student council uh, will be there uh, will be will be there with you to guide you and also to take your questions to the speakers so i'll start with our speakers a little small and brief introduction our today speaker name is uh, advocate komal sina hello am i audible yes 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 yeah sorry so our today speaker name is uh, advocate komal komal gopal sina she is a practicing advocate uh, in high court in appellate side uh, she is also practicing in thane court and jmfc belapur she is been a ad hoc uh, faculty a professor in siddharth law college that is our college itself and a reputed government law college and also kc college she is a uh, she is empanelled advocate in legal aid service department in high court and she is she is having a vast experience in handling criminal matters uh, if i talk about her education her education was uh, she have completed her bms and then she have done her llb from mumbai university then she have completed her llm that uh, and she was uh, a top student that is she top in her year in international law and human rights uh, again from mumbai university so now instead of wasting any more time i know you are all eager to hear our speaker so i'll welcome uh, advocate komal sina ma'am to our uh, webinar and youtube channel good evening ma'am and welcome to our channel good evening good evening my dear thank you so much tarun for your kind words of uh, uh, introduction given to me and um, before i begin to speak anything about this topic i would first like to um, sincerely thank the in charge principal of siddharth law college ms sandhya doke ma'am for uh, giving me this opportunity a golden opportunity to connect with all of you through this webinar and uh, share uh, my experience and conduct today's session i am very grateful to her because uh, she has thought of this uh, unconventional topic which is normally never discussed in public domain and uh, therefore i am only going to share whatever my little experience and my little knowledge is concerned uh, regarding the practice as i am still practicing and you are always practicing once you are an advocate because uh, your practice never stops you never called as a practiced advocate or practiced lawyer you are always practicing since uh, the process of learning keeps continuing uh, as far as uh, this topic is concerned the challenges uh, the challenges faced by new advocates and party in person and even for the final year students who are uh, going to uh, start their practice in the court see this topic is very dear to me it's very close to my heart uh, for the very uh, reason that i am still in this line i'm still working and i know the struggles that uh, any advocate goes through especially when you don't have any family lineage or uh, you know when you are having a wooden spoon you don't have any support from anybody and you are all by your own self so that is also a very big advantage because then you learn a lot and there is a very less expectation out of you in this way it is uh, advantage yes but why this uh, topic is very intriguing also because uh, it is uh, it is such it is a topic which is normally never covered in any uh, college uh, no university no degree no institute can give you the prior hand information that you know such and such things can happen such and th such things will happen and you have to be mentally prepared for it 
so that is why it is very interesting and it is like a reflection of what happens outside college gate and when you enter the practice so that is why it is very uh, very close and very special and it has a phenomenal impact in the minds of all the advocates who are still working and those who are you know wanting to enter into litigation see at the outset i would like to say that lawyers you know they all the lawyers they put in great amount of efforts in learning the nuances of this complex profession this this profession is not simple it's not easy it's very vast and therefore this profession heavily relies on two aspects the first one is the constitution of india and the second one is the conventions and traditions as far as the constitution is concerned the constitution was framed after many great debates it was uh, the constituent assembly met before and after partition and at the meantime the country was going through uh, elation and elation of freedom joy, joy of freedom and at the same time trauma of partition and then came the constitution so we are all bound by this beautiful document which is called constitution and it was therefore woven around the protection of fundamental rights and dignity to human beings there have been n number of debates so what has happened was uh, as you all know that uh, even before the country went through its first general elections i hope you people know when the first general election was it was in the year 1951 52 so even before the country went through its first general election the constitution underwent its very first amendment so then you can realize so many debates were there and then there started judicial debates and discussions that whether a constituent assembly which were not even elected by the members of its people directly can they amend the constitution can are all the fundamental rights open to amendment or uh, there are some restrictions so the debates went on for very long time and justice uh, hidayatullah was the first to plant this thought that i do not think that fundamental rights are open as a play thing to the majority he didn't think that that way he said uh, he does not he did not disagree with the uh, judgment passed by the five bench judge that saying that you know all these things are amendable and uh, the the constitution can be amended any time but he said let me plant this thought for the future generation to come that fundamental rights is not a play thing of majority and so i say that constitution has played a very big role in the lives of all the advocates the second aspect is your convention and tradition see uh, why this uh, convention and tradition is necessary is because uh, the generation before us they have left the tradition and convention for the future generation to take up so it's like a cyclic process and this is why uh, there is uh, you know you try to emulate your seniors you try to check you try to see how they have uh, you know argued what they are saying what are the traditions which and customs which are normally followed so that is what you learn from them this is the this is the particular profession which is high, you know that is why it is heavily rely, relying on constitution as well as tradition and convention remember that always and as far as now the interesting part is concerned of your initial years of practice your first 5 years or 7 years of practice is your formative years the, this th these years in your life as a as a practicing advocate this these years are most challenging most interesting and very defining years of your life it will set the tone you will the you know the it will define your personality it will define your image the kind of practice that you are going to build in the coming years and moreover you know the trajectory will be decided the curve uh, will remain constant you will not have a meteoric rise and it will not come crashing down so there is a need to pay very high and significant amount of attention in your formative years you must not lose your heart you must not feel that this uh, you know i am not able to get through and this is the pressure it's too high because you know i know that there are a lot of expectations out of uh, those graduates the you know uh, law graduates who have just uh, entered the practice you know there is a, many kind of expectations people come across so therefore it is necessary that 
you know you maintain that pace you maintain the tone you keep your uh, formative years very uh, significant for you and you put your entire attention and concentration in it i'll give you an instance suppose uh, you are supposed to talk a foreign language which you are not well versed with like we are uh, see other our mother tongues may differ you know as somebody knows hindi somebody good is very good in marathi and uh, they cannot express so well in uh, you know english same thing even hindi speakers or any gujarati or any 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 mother tongue if you are not well versed with a foreign language and you are put at a place you know where you are asked to speak in foreign language so there is three principles in life the first thing is that suppose you are in a foreign land or foreign language you have to speak the first thing that you do is that you look at the person and you pick up the word you also speak the same word you know that is called as talking you start talking you know that you are less uh, uh, hesitant you are uh, you know easily forgiven uh, you know you are less conscious about what word you are speaking you, you just start talking maybe the pronunciation will be wrong or whatever but you begin to talk that is the first step second step is another person who is watching you and who is little bit familiar with this foreign language will say will tell you let listen this is not the correct pronunciation this word what you are saying is something else and they will tell you okay this is not the word uh, which you are saying the sentence is very uh, you know authoritative in tone so mellow down your tone and speak in a sense of extreme respect and politeness so somebody will be there to brush you and guide you that then you have to constantly improve on your mistakes this is the second point and the third point is your foundation foundation here i mean that you must have a solid foundation that is fluently speaking fluently english is one thing communicating is altogether another Communic in communication you need to have sound uh, uh, you know uh, sense of uh, vocabulary that you use the words that you are using it must be it, it must have that relevance and bearing to what you are speaking so that will only help to build the proper communication with the presiding officer with the judge so the same these three principles are applicable even for any law intern a junior advocate final year student who is now after getting after completing uh, the exam aibe after getting the sanad will have to face that these three uh, principle first start addressing the court first is to talk that means you uh, you rush to the court address the court don't run away from the court this is what the court wants you that you should address the court you should be present you know you it's very easy uh, when you see uh, yeah, the suppose the um, matter is at serial number 45 and the serial number 41 has come it's very easy to get up from the seat and go behind and open the door and call for your senior and tell sir sir uh, this is the matter it's coming at 45 now 41 has reached see you are you must know one thing that you are there to have a constructive reason for time what you are there you are doing a constructive work you must, if you have taken the brief it is your responsibility to go through that brief you should come with a general preparation at least you should know what what the matter is going to be like you should not be totally uh, unaware of what is going to happen let my senior only answer everything i am just over here like a like a watchdog i will only look at the serial number and go go outside then in this way you will not be able to spread your wings you will not be able to uh, you start walking like you know start uh, with the first step of becoming a professional lawyer so this is the reason why you should address the court don't feel uh, anywhere hesitation because what happens is is the biggest challenge for every person initially for one two years you will definitely fear, feel nervous you slightly feel nervous it is very normal if anybody say that i have never felt nervous and i have come with thorough preparation and this is my first day he is lying it never happens like that so it is natural and it is normal for you to feel that little bit of you know nervousness and a rush of you know excitement that goes through your mind at that particular moment later on you start getting used to this this is the first step that i said the second step is don't get used to mediocrity that is keep improving keep keep improving yourself don't uh, uh, like if you have committed one error don't make that error be again committed in another court room before another judge just to test what the judge will say that is not your that that should not be the ideal way of approaching so learn this that one so you have to speak start speaking address the court the second one is you improve yourself and the third one talks about you must read read a lot 
a lot means uh, really you must have that significant impact of uh, reading reading through reading through the uh, brief going through the cases researching you must have then only you will be able to solidify your foundation that is very necessary and if you do this much you know then the court will look after you the court will be patient with you the court will scan you will know that okay you have come with some preparation okay you are present this is the timing of the court you are there you are in complete attire you have come and you want to speak something so the court will be there like a uh, like a father you know to help you uh, you don't have to worry and run away from there understood so this is what it is necessary that you have to be there in the court and then you don't have to be very uh, like uh, scared or you know feel a little bit embarrassed or you know people behind you see this is a one a mantra that i say to some of my other uh, colleague friends that uh, and this whatever i am speaking is purely based on what i have encountered from my eyes what i have seen in the court and it may vary from uh, advocate to advocate other lawyers may uh, you know think on in a different line but what i am saying is what i have seen and that is what i am giving you the information beforehand so once i was discussing that you know there still even if you are uh, feeling nervous that feeling of uh, fear doesn't evaporate easily one person was telling this to me so i said uh, you know there is two ways that uh, you can feel very free and uh, be confident before the judge and the person said what so i said uh, imagine that you have entered the court room and there is nobody behind you everybody is invisible then only you and judge is there so then the person said they know but they are murmuring they are constantly talking there is you know that uh, sense of people there you know there is some kind of noises and voice which comes from behind so then i just happened to uh, speak it out that i said it in a uh, in a very lighter way that uh, you must the second then you must follow the uh, rule rule number 2 that um, all those people who are behind they are not going to participate in the wedding ceremony for you and they are neither going to dance in your barat so you don't have to worry they are not going to come they are not going to haunt you they are not going to run you down for your mistakes nobody will know anything who are they they are, they are not running your home you are yourself running your home no so you must have that feeling that yes i am i have come prepared i am my duty is with this brief and rest i have to be very strong mentally and emotionally i must not be shattered by anybody else so that much strong you have to become so this is the this is one of the profession that enhances your personality also it makes you uh, fearless it makes you more calm and it makes you confident with whatever you have done with whatever work work you have done and it then gives you an insight of uh, what was your argument like what was the development of the case so then you are actually going with the flow so these are the three things that you should remember that your foundation should be good you should start talking there should not be a problem that no i will not talk you know that kind of hesitation should not be there then you have a very significant role to play see friends when you have taken chosen this profession you have uh, taken the responsibility of a lawyer then uh, wittingly or unwittingly you have also taken the responsibility that it holds this profession holds and there are different vast areas of responsibilities that goes you know there is responsibility towards the court towards your client there is, you have obligation towards even your opponent they are not uh, your enemies you must never view them as enemies See, they are your brother sister colleagues they have also written the same exam they have also gone through the same llb syllabus they have also encountered same problems as a student now they are in this line they are uh, you know right opposite to you they are representing some another person you are representing another you should not have that uh, feeling of enmity so you ha- you must respect that the the value of respect should always be there and then you have also obligation towards the profession as a whole if i speak about the res- responsibilities towards the court then the first and the foremost responsibility as a junior advocate is to be inside the court don't sit in the bar room do not do not waste your time in the bar room you are only there to keep your bag get your files and go out you are not supposed to sit there you th- then you will not be constructively utilizing your time 
so the first most foremost thing is that you have to remain present as a junior advocate you cannot take the liberty to be away from uh, the court when the matter is being called out matter is being heard and discussed by the judge you cannot say that okay i will you know don't rely on leave notes sick notes uh, 230s adjournment don't have that you know thing in your behavior you must always remember that whatever you are practicing today will germinate into a garden tomorrow so you have to make an impression before the judge that you are always there you are not running away from the court and in this way you must know that you are supposed to speak all correct facts don't give don't miss out on facts whenever you speak anything before the court you you must be prepared with the facts and at least don't give any facts which you are not sure of or which is not on record then you are bound with that sentence then you become bound by that word what you have just uh, spoken in the court so be very careful when you are you know uh, being inside the court maintain the decorum maintain silence and do not uh, be uh, you know uh, taken by a right, joy ride by some other senior advocates they are saying that no oh, this is a new judge or the judge may not know anything judges know everything let me be tell, be honest with you there has been a time when i was once in uh, jmfc court and uh, one another new magistrate had just joined he was uh, there was one transfer of some judge and one new new magistrate had joined he was the new judge so one of the senior he just happened to say near the lobby ke he is like a, you know new person uh, it's okay cmi date ho jayega types but then i went inside the court and i was appearing for the complainant it was a private criminal complaint and the other side was uh, uh, the advocate who whose junior was present now what happened uh, the moment i entered and after some time when the matter was called out the junior was already gone after some time because it was like i think uh, it was uh, 12 uh, 1:30 1:45 something and the matter was there from 11 o'clock serial number 16 i still remember precisely so uh, when the matter was called out i was there in the court and the the judge was so thorough with the entire uh, matter he happened to say that in the last date you had pressed an application for show cause notice uh, today you, you make an application for the in hand by hand and the kamgiri will be done you can take it so it was very smooth the judge was actually prepared and uh, this impression what other uh, you know seniors were, uh, some people were speaking that you know then you tend to absorb that you know try to remain unadulterated try to remain focused you are answerable to the court what others are saying how others are behaving what they are thinking that will not define your career and your, it will not define you as a person so always remember that then you have duty i mean the responsibility towards the uh, client now this is very interesting sometimes the client comes and ask for all the information legal inputs and then goes away you don't have to run after the client you must make yourself so much hardened and so much uh, you know uh, reliable and dependable on yourself that you don't have to run after the clients the clients whenever anybody comes for a with a matter to you you must try to accept the matter if suppose at a very early stage of your life if any complex matter has come then you also have the right to refuse the matter that you know i cannot take this matter i am not well versed or uh, you know i will you can use any any reason that you know why you think you will not be able to do justice and then you can guide you know some any, any seniors name or whatever it depends on you uh, some people even don't say with senior is okay with senior is not okay because information is not easily given in the court so that is why uh, this these are the duties you have towards whenever you accept a brief you have to be 100% honest with that brief you cannot tell you cannot put the blame on the client k you know you have not told me you have not said to me like once it happened there was a, there was a matter in high court and uh, there was one advocate he was appearing for the petitioner and the respondent advocate was also present in the court and uh, there was some uh, information that the petitioner's advocate was not aware of so he happened to even give information outside the court to the uh, client that you have not told me this you are don't know see it is your duty to first find out all the information from the client don't rely that every word that they are saying is true you have to talk with them properly you have to cross examine them you have to check 
you have to cross check and verify whether what that person is saying is correct or not gather the information gather the instruction go through it and how you deal with your client is also an art your it enhances your skill your interpersonal skills so that should not be uh, you know undervalued that only money talks this kind of uh, thing doesn't work for a long standing advocate for being an outstanding advocate and making a special mark for yourself you know uh, in your career that will not work so many a times it has happened that uh, the you know junior advocates they emulate they imitate their higher uh, your senior advocates how they are behaving that is what they will they will do it should not be like that so you should only learn positive qualities try to avoid all the negative uh, traits which comes with the baggage if you're joining any senior it's not necessary that you will always find positivity every time there will be because he is a human being after all so everything you should not absorb okay there should be something of your own also that you should carry then you have your obligation towards the opponent now this is also very interesting whenever you appear in the court mention mention the matter in presence of your colleague i'll tell you why it is very easy to speak behind somebody's back speaking right in front of someone takes courage and if you are speaking the truth you are speaking factfully you are prepared with your matter then you should never worry that what will happen what will be the circumstances what will you know uh, uh, what will be the consequence you should not worry like that if you that is why i am saying that try to mention it right in front of your colleague whoever appears uh, opposite to you and these shortcuts you know trying to uh, make shortcuts and uh, getting an order out of turn sometimes you know the judges are very careful in giving the order also they say they when they dictate they say that uh, not mentioned uh, they say that the not mentioned in the cause list the advocate for the petition uh, the petitioner's advocate has brought the matter out of turn this thing is written in the order so then uh, that that is that is also slightly damaging because then you are trying to play such tricks you are not informing the other side you are not sending a notice you want only one side to be heard and as you have heard that uh, very famous uh, there is a phrase audi alterum partum without the other side no but no judgment can be passed no order can be passed only ex parte is passed and that too after giving lot of chances so you must know that and one very uh, common thing that i have seen and i have also experienced it i will i will be very brutally honest that you try to uh, have heated arguments try avoiding you know heated arguments try avoiding sharp exchanges heated exchanges brow beating brow beating all these things are all old fashioned advocacy uh, it is uh, it is a complete no no don't do this because it never enhances your personality and reputation as a lawyer so you know you should learn from whatever mistakes you have done so that later on you don't do that you become more sober in your presentation okay then you have um, even the same thing uh, adjournments some uh, other side will be relying on adjournments so therefore you are relying do not rely on adjournment do not uh, seek any further time unnecessary time and uh, don't think that the you know uh, other side's junior has come so you have the liberty to speak a uh, little uh, you know in in a different fashion that is even worst see the way you behave with your with the junior advocate of someone you should not forget you have also been a junior so you should always maintain that that respect you cannot say that no no i will not respect is a junior this is not the way and then comes your uh, another uh, obligation towards the profession as a whole it is a very big thing this is this is tough but you have to conduct it with high amount of grace and uh, persistence see try to gather as much as possible gather the instruction or gather the notes gather the facts get, do research work you should not be saying that i don't have anything today to do in the court so i am sitting idle no you you have to build yourself see once uh, you know the complex matter comes to you once in 5 year once or twice in 10 years so then you can't say that now i will go back 10 years i will rewind my time and then i will sit and then i will do the preparation that should not be the behavior and that that is that is why i say you should constantly please uh, now in this today day and age we have cds 
we have all uh, lecture series cds but i still uh, suggest i i cannot advise because i am not i have not completed 10 years of practice so i am using the word suggestion so i am i can only suggest you people that please go through the traditional method of reading from the books journals scc journal air what these journals will give you the development of the law from where like two bench judges disagreed then the same law was carry forwarded in a next hearing by a greater bench then the, the three bench judges doubted this legal proposition then finally the matter went to the larger bench the larger bench then uh, they coined this particular proposition as uh, the law of the land so now hence this was the development of the land this information will be only given in the books and therefore i say you read the books issue the books you get your uh, uh, scc uh, law journals and every month they give some development which is happening stay updated cultivate the habit of reading cultivate your thoughts your uh, insights you should develop your insights you should not you should have uh, knowledge of a lot of things you do, you cannot say i only have knowledge of law only because law is not only about law it is even beyond law you should have a little knowledge about agriculture you should have little knowledge about uh, sociology psychology human sciences uh, you know uh, things like um, uh, accountancy management at least something some knowledge you, if this you have you know economics history if you have this kind of knowledge you are updated then it will enhance your personality then you can uh, you know you can uh, easily converse and strike a conversation and and give your uh, share your knowledge absorb the knowledge it will just create more and more it will blossom your personality as an advocate therefore i have suggested many times to the, even in the college uh, in the morning lectures like whenever i get the time so i always uh, suggest this to the students that please do not uh, please do not be overloaded by or get ad addicted by tv channels as news as anchors today are, are mostly uh, screaming on top of their lungs in order to extract maximum trp and sensationalizing the news communalizing the news polarizing here and there just to avoid the important situation which is the country is facing today so therefore it's very easy to listen but it takes more efforts to read when you start reading a newspaper also see you come across some articles you know it is written very well the english impeccable language the vocabs which are used vocabularies all that thing you can draw you can relate with and then you can later on while you are arguing your final arguments golden points you can discuss it then such such kind of language and uh, you know such kind of uh, fluency is developed not overnight but it comes from time so that is why i always suggest all the people please because litigation is a very tough uh, you know area of law and here you are defining how you how you you will conduct in the court so this much is regarding the uh, responsibilities towards all the profession towards your client your opponents and your court the another significant area that i want to give my i want to share my thoughts with is about drafting see drafting appearance and presentation and art of advocacy okay these are the other few areas i just want to have a brief uh, information i'll just share some information regarding this in drafting see please uh, as human beings we have a natural tendency to use superfluous statements and superfluous uh, you know uh, languages cut that out the tighter it is the more crisp and concise it is the better the judge in the while the judge is reading he, within a first paragraph and second paragraph he must uh, realize where the shoe bite where, where is the shoe bite for the petitioner what is the problem so when you are drafting see uh, mark twain uh, i don't know how much of you have heard of this name or not but mark twain once said that uh, some writings are like chloroform in print you you read them and you become you just go fainted it they are chloroform in print that is what he had said see some drafts are so, it should not be long and boring if you are compelling the judge and your opponent to read that brief 15 paragraphs you are reading and in the end of the 15 paragraph also the what is the fact has not come out you are just using certain uh, rosy rosy words uh, you know uh, the superfluous expressions please cut that out that is not the skill of drafting and drafting also in first drafting it will never come out it will it will cut into second drafting third drafting fourth drafting then it will become better 
and there is nothing which is a straight jacket uh, formula of drafting where you will have in a pen drive or in your uh, computer you will just get it uh, downloaded from some another person leave uh, just uh, erase the uh, title may, uh, write your title and then same paragraph you will follow no copy paste method does not happen and it should not happen it it doesn't work out but i i request uh, the students that whenever you are entering you must have at least go and check the model copies it's the available in civil department criminal department model copies and there are different way of writing the beauty of writing is different so that also requires immense amount of concentration and time and efforts from the working advocate then you have see this is the uh, this is about drafting then about your appearance when you appear and present a case of course your outward appearance your demeanor it holds a uh, value but not absolute value if you are having a rolex watch or uh, you know gucci bag that will not define the fate of your matter what what is important is what you are going to speak in the court how you are going to present the case uh, remember one thing don't take don't be over confident if you have five legal contentions which are you are going to raise you have to be prepared with all five legal contentions you can't say just one and two today i am prepared three four five i will tell later uh, it is very funny it once happened uh, it happened in uh, uh, session court thane i was i was appearing for the accused somebody had come for uh, uh, the complainant some advocate was there and uh, the matter was it was uh, being proceeded and suddenly the advocate said uh, and he was not a very uh, elder aged advocate he was also a junior advocate but he had some experience few i think 1 2 3 years of experience he had so he happened to say in the court that uh, your honor I, there are five legal contentions i will go one by one so then i was uh, when i heard him saying that i immediately took the paper and the pen and i just sat down i thought because next i have to speak after him so then when he was saying at that time the judge was also listening he said the first legal contention he said the second legal contention the third was extension of the second fourth was extension of first and then he concluded so what happened was i since i was writing down and the judge was looking at me also the judge happened to ask him you have said about first and second contention where is third fourth and fifth at that time he said no your honor that is what i have explained she said no you said i have five legal contentions you are saying one and two i have taken on record now what is third fourth and fifth at that time uh, the uh, that that particular advocate he happened to look around at me at people around him and then he took for a moment and he said your honor may i request for some time now in this situation you must never open your mouth see when you know that somebody has is in a tight situation you must not uh, jump in and uh, you know make some uh, unwarranted remarks against your uh, you know uh, colleague against your opponent because let that that be decided by the court you must have that much uh, you know grace and demeanor that uh, you know let the court decide because see everybody does mistake but this was a blunder you know you can't take it for granted that your judge will accept it and agree and they will say okay thank you that you have said the two contentions i will give you another date then i will it is not the way the judge will go sometimes judges take you through a different route you know you have to be flexible so you must learn this tricks you must know how to be flexible what to say how much to say try to read the mind of the judge when you open a matter try to read how much the judge knows and whatever you you know if you have prepared five contention make sure you are prepared with five contention otherwise don't make the statement that there are five contentions ultimately we got another date next date and the matter is still progressing but this is what the normally it happens see you should know one thing you must uh, as uh, uh, like you know while you are presenting a matter you must never be over confident you must never uh, you must be patient but unhurried at the same time you have to be crisp and concise with what your matter is you if your matter is that serial number 2 70 advocates will be standing behind you they will be uh, running down your neck they will be breathing breathing down your neck literally asking you to you know okay okay ho gaya ho gaya move move so you can't take that pressure of all the other advocates your other colleagues who are standing behind you the judge who is impatient you can't take uh, that kind of pressure and that is why it is uh, advice means it is suggested that you know you should uh, 
stick with your proper presentation your complete appearance and whatever you want to speak please try to read the mind of the judge see there are many different kinds of judges one is a judge is a equity based judge one is a relief oriented judge one is strictly technical judge uh, one is law oriented judge so try to weave your facts around the law there is no matter in the world which will tell you that this is the law this is the result this 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 is the law applicability this is the result this should be the judgment no it all depends on the facts how you present the facts where you are which law point are you pressing try maximum you should try to weave your facts only around the law not law around facts so then you can easily it will be nicer that you persuade the judge to come as per his own conclusion don't demand that this this should be the order this is the citation so it should happen like this give the you know uh, to the judge give that much uh, you ha you have to give the respect to the judge because see he is sitting over there as a judge so you must not force your decision on him in any manner you may not be doing it directly but your actions will be speaking louder than words then what will happen so then you cannot uh, you know correct yourself once the impression goes like this then you are supposed to live with it so therefore i request i mean with all humility if possible try to weave your facts around the law that you are going to press before the judge and the last point is i mean second last is your uh, art of advocacy now this is also something that nobody would like to share so conveniently but because it is for the interest of all the lawyers and in students so i am informing this that whenever you are appearing in the courts with my limited knowledge i'm saying this with my limited experience and knowledge right now the art of presentation counts highest and the in advocacy you must know one thing you if you are appearing for a petitioner then you have a first hand uh, freedom to give your facts first but if suppose the matter is already there in the and you are replying to the matter and you are a respondent's advocate then what you should do is that you must whatever the arguments are there on the other side first you have to discuss that and then give your argument your answers and then say see like for example if there is a matter i repeat myself there is a matter and you know so such and such will be the contention from the other side you say first your you can either start like this also that you can talk about your first facts of the case either four five or whatever you can give the reason and you can say that likely the opponent is likely to raise these points your honor and this is my answer to that so then in this way you have created a remarkable impression before the judge you have taken out the entire sting of the opponent's momentum so you are not allowing him to build his momentum you are you know speaking in that context that is the art of advocacy you it is not only that you the you are asking the judge you look at me this is the fact this is important sir this is this is this is the law this should be applicable and all that thing is false no you the beauty of presentation is you tell what the other side also wants to say you cover up his point also other side and then say that you know your honor this is what my contention is however uh, this is what i believe in or my humble submission is so and so in this way the judge will be completely impressed by you that yes uh, you know what are the possibility and what are the other and what is applicable whether their points are applicable in law or not and then you are giving your uh, understanding so this way you have impressed the judge try to uh, this you will learn slowly slowly because even i it was i was not aware uh, how it is to be done so even i am uh, even in the process of learning so this is how it goes you must have the proper art of presentation and therefore i tell you go in the court observe don't sit in the bar room observe the lawyers how they are uh, speaking what they are telling how they are arguing in which manner they are taking and the last thing that i want to talk about this profession as in whole is that very important thing learn to take a disappointing result with grace you might have argued very well you might have done your 100 200% but you should know that your your opinion will not matter because you are a lawyer so whatever is the conclusion whatever the decision of the court is that matter and you must give consideration to the judge why because we as lawyers we face three or four judges at a time on a day maybe one judge sometimes maybe two or maybe four and five 
but a judge he has to face 70 lawyers 60 to 70 lawyers in one day so you have to give him that consideration don't uh, feel that you know something is wrong and especially in the moment when there will be dictation the judge will be looking at you especially when he knows that you know it is not in your favor judge will be scanning you you must be you must have that calmness you must not uh, just you know frown your eyebrows and you know feel like disappointed looking at the ground looking here and there see that is not the conduct you must ever carry as an advocate you must respect see uh, there has to be a line of respect that you have to draw you and see you may have a lot of disagreement with the judge you may not like his approach you may not like his conduct you may not like his expression sometimes some judges they also speak that uh, you are uh, what they say is you are not you are a high court lawyer this is not high court this is session court sometimes the judge use this kind of sentence you should not feel over sensitive you should not be so touchy you should give that relaxation sometimes it happens you know you are, you may disagree you may have lot of problems you may not like the way he is approaching to your case and you are having this information prior that you know definitely it will go negative it will not uh, you know stand with us but there is some reason that why he is sitting there as a judge 20 30 years of experience he has he himself has been a 10 years practicing minimum 10 years practice hona chahiye to become a judge okay and then he is sitting there with some experience he is he is not representing himself he is representing the chair he is sitting on the chair so you have to respect the chair you know there there can be anything see i'm not telling you be cow down or you know you be you bend down as per whatever uh, the court is saying reasonable or unreasonable no you must have your own self respect also nobody is saying you see no provision no authority in law expects a lawyer to grovel you're not supposed to grovel you must have your own self respect also but in that boundary in that line of respect you can draw it easily where the the respect ends and where this line of disrespect begins so you can you, there is a silver lining you cannot ever cross that silver lining you must put it in your mind you whatever other people say you should never get carried away with with their statement with their expressions no you are an unadulterated and pure advocate working hard you have your you have to make a mark in this field if you want to be an outstanding advocate you have to continuously read continuously learn because you almost always you know in the beginning of formative years you will try to have plan b also open for many of you it happens so that is why it is necessary this is as per about uh, the lawyers i can say that how the uh, lawyers ought to they ought to behave and ought to be in a position where they are able to take any kind of uh, difficult or you know uh, disappointing decisions but with grace you also have certain amount of discipline and integrity within yourself you must not allow that hurt you so much therefore you have to never associate yourself personally in the case try not to get involved personally you are helping a client you are getting your whatever uh, nominal fees whatever it is and you are doing your level best that is what matters you must never associate in the beginning of my uh, you know formative years first two years when i all had got the brief for a high court and then after one two hearing first hearing was good second hearing was good third hearing was slightly disappointing so then you become uh, initially that emotion you know springs up you feel that oh you have failed immediately you try to put yourself in the negative zone no there is always filters see the filters are there in even in judicial department there is a session court there is a high court there is supreme court you have a chance and you must when you have firm belief when you are true and you are honest with your work and your goal and your concentration is is directly related with only with the justice for the case then nothing can stop you You, you must not feel that uh, one you know in one court if you have not uh, got the desired result then life long that it will be like that that emotion should not crop up this much i am saying about the lawyers the second thing is for party in person <laughs> party in person is also uh, it's also very uh, you know i can closely re uh, relate uh, this also because i have seen uh, you know from my own eyes uh, victims who are appearing in the court who have been a victim of an offense they are themselves appearing in the court and they want to speak and once it has happened that uh, you know some two uh, victims were there in the case 
and uh, I was appearing for the accused in one matter. Uh, one of the, there were three accused. I was appearing for one of the accused. And uh, the victims, they happened to come in and, you know, disrupt the court saying that, no, no, your honor, this is a uh, very wrong and whatever they had to speak out. The challenges faced by the, the party in person is that they are uh, drawn with emotions. They are able to communicate only through emotions. They leave their mind behind. It takes a backseat. I'm not saying all of them, but most of the people who are coming party in person, they are very, very attached with the brief. They're holding their brief like that. And, uh, you know, they cannot uh, take any uh, adverse uh, opinions which might come uh, in any hearing, in any stage of hearing. So they become emotional. And the thing is that although they suggest, you know, when, when especially in high court and when you're appearing in person, there is a memo which you have to also mention that I'm well versed with the law. This is my Aadhaar card. This is my, uh, you know, ID. And I'm appearing for my own self. See, there are many reasons why people appear in person. As uh, an empaneled advocate for legal aid department, I can say it with complete uh, sense of uh, sympathy, I mean, empathy towards them, that there are three reasons. First reason, that they might have been deeply damaged by some another advocate who might have done wrong to them, mostly monetarily wrong. So they don't have trust on any other advocate. So they have lost the trust on all the advocates. They have been deeply affected by somebody. Second, they are of the opinion, they are a little overconfident. They are of the opinion, I, I know best. I will do my work. I don't want help. I don't want anybody's assistance. And the third is that some of them are not even aware that there are legal aid departments, that there are uh, counsels who will be asked by the court to take the matter for them. Even at, there are times when the judges say that, uh, would you like to get some legal aid cell department? Because there is, you have uh, in the constitution, you have the right for free legal aid also. So they say, no, no, no. They are like, means most of them are uh, not well versed with the technicalities, the formalities, the procedure of the court, because they, they are not working over there. See, merely having a LLB degree does not qualify you to know all the proceedings of the court. That only happens when you are actively working. Since they are not actively working, they have been affected by uh, a crime and they are appearing in person. So uh, even the judge, it is a dilemma that uh, how to, you know, persuade the person right in standing in front. And there are so many uh, advocates and everybody is watching what is happening. And it, it actually disturbs the flow. Uh, it's not, the judges don't have anything against uh, anyone, e even the uh, advocates, we, nothing personal against somebody. But they since they are very sensitive, that emotion doesn't go easily. And that is why they are not able to, uh, you know, speak out the legal points. They can just give the information and then they leave it at the wisdom of the court and judge. The moment the judge talks about other, any other, uh, you know, uh, like um, stage of notice or, uh, you know, uh, what the other side is saying, this is the other side reply. And they just uh, forget everything. They don't even read through the reply. It has happened. I have seen by my own eyes two, two brothers had come in the court. So they were behaving like that. But it is nothing against them. They are not, they are laymen. They are common people. And no provision in law prohibits them to pursue their case. It's not that they cannot pursue. They can, provided, provided they have the knowledge, sound knowledge of law. They have done enough research work. And uh, in their case, it is fitting. I'm uh, very uh, delighted to say that there were some judges, I don't want to name any judge right now, but uh, they have given a remarkable orders for party in person, expansion of remarks, this, that, everything. So that happened even when somebody is not even uh, having any association with law degree. I've seen people doing very well also, but they are very exceptional. Most of the party in person, they face this trouble. And therefore, we suggest them that, you know, you uh, try to seek, uh, you know, help from uh, any other legal officer. So that is why we say, we suggest that it is better that, uh, you know, you should have a second opinion, third opinion. And you come in the court. I've seen many party in person, they are uh, sitting in the, you know, audience and they are watching over. But it's okay. You should not go and introduce yourself. Let them come. You are required to help them. Because, see, all the people who come to the court, especially the witnesses, uh, the prosecution witness, the victim, if they come to the court, they are actually 
guest of the court one of the public prosecutor in thane session court had told me this that you know they are the guest of the court they are not supposed to malign you know they are not supposed to be put down and always remember uh, this character assassination is also a very out uh, you know old and outdated method of presenting a case never fall for it it will never be beneficial for your case you have to speak with facts only and choice of words should be very very smartly uh, you know uh, mentioned before the court and very and it should be it shouldn't be in your face it should not be loud it should not be uh, you know uh, something which is derogatory to even mention and un, you know unworthy of mentioning so you should know where to cover up what to say what not to say all this thing you will learn when you enter practice when you have a guide also with you if you i suggest that better is to have a mentor because if you have mentor then you are able to learn pick up easily if you don't have a mentor no problem you can still work work yourself but you have to work very hard where this this field is very challenging see one last thing i want to say about today's session um there is a saying some people they use a very loose conversation about profession of lawyers and law remember one thing that although it is a malign profession people speak in a very loose sense but you should never forget that abraham lincoln mahatma gandhi sardar vallabhbhai patel they all were lawyers and history can debate whether how good or not good they law the lawyers they were but one thing they can never discount is that they were damn good leaders they were damn good leaders so you should always remember that you don't fall for such uh, you know under underrated uh, you know words and very uh, what do you call that substandard uh, sentences people use in in a quotes outside that what is the difference between good lawyers and great lawyers so this happened in the initial years when i just when i had just started practicing and these quotes are very infamous it's everywhere mentioned so one of the other person said no what is the difference good lawyers and great lawyers so one said that the answer to that was uh, good lawyers know law uh, great lawyers know the judge and people started laughing it is so pathetic it is so disgusting that people are using in your face they are coming and uh, you know trying to use such uh, sentences and they laugh upon the you know this kind of the profession they try to malign it but uh, it is i really feel sorry for such people because if you do not respect your profession how can you expect that you will rise in this profession you must look your perspective your uh, you know way of looking at the uh, profession that matters the most what people say what others say what people have different opinions that has no value at all because you are going to make a mark people will look at you what you have done so you must always respect the profession i uh, till my final year of, of bms i was not aware that i would ever be lawyers uh, a lawyer and let me tell you one thing many people who are not aware that they will be in this line they become very good lawyers i'm not talking about myself and i'm i cannot comment on myself let the clients say about it but i'm saying that uh, the you know kind of profession because most people are like uh, you know headless chicken running directionless after the college also they are not aware and which is very common same thing happened with me also as an average student i can tell you this that you know we are all in similar you know line we have been through that so i just want to give you this intimation and advance intimation that this advocacy this field of advocacy is filled with knowledge of law precision you remember your seven lamps of advocacy i can mention even much more than that there are not only seven lamps there are many lamps to the advocacy hard work is the key factor hard work knowledge of law flexibility your accuracy sense of precision uh, your presentation soft skills persuasiveness convincing power your uh, ability to address the court your integrity you know your, uh, your commitment dedication devotion for this profession all this comes from time and with experience so the way you cultivate yourself you remember you are your own brand okay don't try copy pasting other people you should have your own mark you know you have a signature style so you should follow your own self so try to make yourself you be a better version of yourself the best profession i can say is law it helps you it gives you chances multiple chances to become a better version of yourself which other profession will give you so many chances i can say one thing with extreme honor and privilege that this 
occup this particular profession is not only noble but it is very helpful profession as an individual it strengthens you emotionally it makes you a better human being and only a better human being and person who is having a strong hold on emotions and a good human being can become the best lawyer and you all have the ability to become the best of best whatever we could you can do much better in further in future years to come so i i just want to conclude this by saying that see many many times you might feel a little upset you will feel uh, you know nervous relating with this profession when you enter you will be constantly uh, you know talking with your other friends and you will try to learn what they are earning how much they are drawing the salary what they are getting in the end of the month then you will start comparing but you must have sufficient uh, time in your hand you should be uh, you must have that immunity that yes i can survive two, one two years all myself without asking money and i can make sure that you know i do all this work and i will be i will be able to succeed i will be able to take care of my expenses at least and dheere dheere you will grow in this field and try to work on the temperament of others as far as the temp temperament is concerned just talk only as per the temperament of others how much they want to listen don't speak don't uh, invest your you know in energy at one straight one simple go sixer don't do that you wait you know try to uh, put your energy to the best use in the end so that will always help you to uh, keep you motivated so this is all i would like to say about i don't have anything uh, much to speak on party in person that what i have seen i can say and advantages of party in person yes uh, there is the one advantage that that you are the monitor of your case and you know where the case is going what is the next state you are not at the mercy of calling the advocate and asking what is the next state or something like that but uh, more than advantage there is a lot of disadvantage associated with it so do i don't uh, feel uh, anything that is wrong to appear as party in person but it is a very it's a very challenge it's a big challenge to appear in person and that too if you are appearing before uh, some opponent who already has experience but you learn from your mistakes so then uh, you that that spirit should not die so you must make sure that even if you are appearing in person you do sufficient amount of research sufficient amount of research in your case laws in your uh, you know legal propositions what you will be addressing you must have the page number with you in your fingertips page number order impugned order annex annex a b c d whatever it is and uh, correct documents and facts it will be very damaging if you are trying to hide any fact which is there which is known to you and your opponent reveals it in the court during the proceeding at that time the judge will be looking at you that you didn't tell me ms sinha uh, you did not uh, inform this information you didn't give me this you did not mention it till now and what you will do you will be just looking like that see that that is why i say whatever you are appearing and arguing in the court your client will go away you are staying in that court so so that is why it is it is going to be very damaging if opponent talks about you know any fact that you are trying to conceal you reveal the facts then are you see that that is that much courage you should have and you must always be prepared prepared with what are the questions which are likely to spring up anticipate the questions well in advance and this you will learn only when you enter practice okay so this is what i conclude my today's session and uh, i hope i am able to give you the relevant information regarding uh, what should be the challenge what are the challenges and what mostly the challenges are related with uh, self you know within your own self hesitation nervousness anxiety uh, restlessness all these things are uh, you know going in the mind of every advocate it happens in the be beginning of formative years it always happens so these are the challenges and one has to face it okay ma'am uh, can we start a question yes 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 please yeah ma'am our today's topic was new challenges faced for newcomers so ma'am mm -hmm. uh, can you highlight on some of the points of challenge faced by the newcomers such as the contempt of court by any of the lawyers have been faced or uh, what what I'm not getting the point ma'am our today's topic was a new uh, the challenges faced by the newcomers the new yes. lawyers yes ma'am uh, can you explain us some of the points when any of the lawyers you have encountered has faced any problem with you or any of your colleagues 
or can you explain on the contempt of court contempt of court yeah yes, so it has been seen like uh, when new lawyers enter the court so they don't know how to speak and how to act before the judges and uh, we have heard that there has been cases on new lawyers of contempt of court so yeah, yeah, uh, usse kaise bacha jaye basically yes ma'am see there are two types of contempt you are all aware of civil and criminal try not to take anything personal from the judge try avoiding that emotions that goes against the judge you are not supposed to disrupt the proceeding of the court administration of justice so whenever you are appearing with especially this happens mostly when the you have uh, the there is a disappointing result after uh, you know immense arguments that has finished so then uh, that kind of emotions you must never cultivate in you because you are not dealing with him as a person nothing against the judge i repeat myself there must never be any character assassination or anything against the judge per se your entire focus should be on the judgment on the ratio decidendi that is taken by the judge and only then you can build in the in the higher court you can challenge it so try try to remain sober and calm and take it with grace whatever the adverse decision also comes dissatisfactory result comes please take it with grace T- tell your clients also to not to remain uh, you know very um, heated when there is dictation open dictation going in the court normally uh, using sl- uh, you know slang words or abusive uh, you know explicits and uh, trying to uh, make and imp- you know cast an impression against the judge trying to uh, you know uh, make certain gestures uh, unwarranted gestures that must be avoided and that should never ha- never happen why you are against the judge he is just dealing he is just over there see he does not know you personally there is no enmity that pers- the judge is appearing on the dais uh, between 11 to 5 and 6 after that he goes in the chamber he does a lot of dictation work so he even does not know your complete history also but he if he comes across any kind of uh, you know uh, final argument and he he in his own uh, wisdom in his own understanding if he is drawing a conclusion you can definitely argue about the conclusion or the ratio decidendi or any other point which he has not uh, considered to a superior court but you must never take it against that judge this judge is bad or this judge is wrong and he should not he is he should have hurt me and he should have taken my uh, preposition as the most as the spine of the case no so ne- refrain refrain from using anything derogatory inside the court tell your clients to be out if the, if you feel that you know they are highly emotional people ask them to stay out you have to be very calm and this is only you can only govern your mind so you have to brush yourself up like that You, that is why uh, your contempt you should not create ma'am the next question is related with the same thing which you have said mm-hmm. one of our participant have asked he what to do if you are uh, if you are a new lawyer and uh, you are not dis- you are, sorry you are not agreeing with the judgment of the uh, judges or the view of the judges so what to do in such a case in such a case you persuade him to uh, have opinion or carve an opinion from your prism also but if you feel that he tells that if the judge tells you that i have heard you but i do not agree with you so you have to give the respect to him all right you don't have to push him further because you your duty was to appear and present the case give the citation everything is on record so rnp you don't have to worry about the rnp in the uh, court when you go superior court they you can call for uh, the record and proceedings in the lower court you have done the work and then also he had chosen to look the other side he is at discretion to do so and uh, it is very common especially for the junior lawyers you know to immediately point a finger on the judge immediately and if they are happy with the judge they will continuously spread the word this judge is very kind this judge is very kind he is very nice see you should not have any uh, uh, ill opinion or anything uh, you know uh, detrimental to his uh conduct you should never go personal so this you will learn only uh, you know when you will be standing there in the court and you have to actually brush up your own personality you must mellow down your tone you must uh, know if the judge is saying i heard you counsel i heard you that means you have to pay the respect he has heard you 
are you going to put a gun point on him and say that no now you have to decide like this no then it will not enhance your reputation it will be a big it will be a big black stigma that you have done certain certain things he can even give a dictation and you try to try to apologize if you have done anything any misconduct try to apologize sometimes i know some judges uh, i will not name anybody but there are at times when the judges they try to you know cast certain aspersions like you know i know you are very good in english or uh, but this is not high court or something like that you know that uh, i know better you are not sitting you are not here to give me direction these are the common sometimes sometimes the judges they happen to say i, I, have, I have to respect have... them um i have heard that there was a there was a incident between you and a judge when in your earlier days can you give a light on that some so like uh, what happened exactly <laughs> there have been many such incidences in the beginning days let me not go that side if you you want to have any information see i will reserve my certain in the beginning yes of course i i agree that uh, uh, you know you were you you are young blood you come uh, you know you and you have no godfather so there is nobody to guide you and you are not aware of certain things and nuances so uh, there was once you know that um, i had i had appeared and i had uh, i was arguing the case and the judge was uh, trying to uh, you know bring me down and say that no no i have heard you enough so uh, there, i think there have been plenty of cases in the beginning arun so, so let us let us not go there and at least today i have been to, today i am working on the on those skills so i am any, very any remark much. any remarkable incident which you can share like on record <laughs> you are putting me in a fix uh okay <laughs> there was one case uh but uh, okay there was a case when uh, uh, the judge was uh, saying you know certain uh, he was uh, giving his views and he is entitled to give his opinions and somewhere i i had felt that you know it could damage uh, the case further so there is a crpc 406 that is transfer of case so immediately in the next day i had asked you know my client that let us do one thing you can do you can go ahead this way also but uh, thankfully it didn't happen and the judge was transferred later on and another judge had come these are the earlier techniques we used to follow that uh, when you are not happy with the judge and at times also see there was a time when even the judge was uh, very uh, upset he said okay i will uh, write uh, to the president bar council maharashtra goa bar council india you know i don't uh, whatever some conducts or something which you even didn't mean it so you have to apologize at times you do yes that no no sir i have not meant that way no no i will see but he was so kind that uh, when i had to i had asked to the uh, you know bench clerk is there anything written like that so he said no no nothing is in print he was just trying to you know uh, catch you by by your head so he was like okay so it was one of the uh, incidences there have been actually there have been a list of incidences which you have and it has helped you learn better i can just say that it 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 makes you a better person once you get that kind of pinch it it enhances your personality also as when you appear in a court and you learn definitely man Uh, arun you are asking me this <laughs> i don't i don't want to give anything on record like this well, well, man, work, no. ah, and uh, man can you explain you as how you started uh, your career means uh, what was your means uh, man, as a newcomer means how you started means because every viewer on the youtube will know means how you started ma'am exactly what your beginning uh, ma'am what what we want to know exactly is like For, as a newcomer you should uh, directly jump into the water and like uh, that means uh, you should directly go as an advocate and practice or you should uh, go and do intern and how you started your career because like they say ki jab tak pani mein kudoge nahi tarna sikhoge nahi ha so how was your start man so <laughs> man can you explain about you because everyone will know see uh, i was very fortunate i didn't choose this profession the profession chose me i was very fortunate and i always i will always remain grateful to this thing because uh, in the initial days of uh, my college days i after my ty i was give, I'd given an exam entrance exam for mba i i was selected also but uh, there were certain circumstances which uh, propelled me and gravitated my interest in law and uh, that time uh, my father was in abroad he was in service there 
so i happened to give a call to my father and i asked him papa i want to change my profession i don't want to go into this and you know i want to do something in law so of course it was uh, you know a big bang theory that happened at uh, at my uh, home and my mother my both my parents are uh, i have the best parents in the whole world wide world that they have supported me so much that uh, they said that uh, if you if you want to excel in this this field then you are always welcome but then don't do somersault because because then it will be very difficult for you to you know attain uh, your uh, momentum in the career so i am very thankful and fortunate that my parents were always there by my side and they believed in me and my conviction and i said that um, okay i will do my level best so by by grace of god i stood first in llb also and then later on the moment i finished my llb i was uh, before in the final year only i mean second year precisely i used to visit court and i used to go in the nearby courts not uh, not like posh building high courts i had never seen high court i even i was not aware where exactly it is located after vt when when you enter a station cst how long it takes to go in high court i had not even seen in second year also of llb and uh, what happened was why well, my i was very fortunate that uh, when i had been in the courts and initially i used to i had used to have a feeling that you know so many people are sitting here initially i was not aware that you know the, that particular uh, seats are only for advocates so then one of the senior uh, had come to me saying that you know this is uh, not for audience this is only for advocates so then i went uh, gracefully okay i went in sat in the audience i used to just look at around and you know people are conversing and how they are talking with the judge after few minutes i used to go in another court room then in another court room then later on one day i saw one uh, practice sitting advocate there in the court uh, where i have i had been to and he was arguing a matter a lot of the matters were uh, you know related with some another judgment so he had a pile of judgments with him so i had seen his brief i had seen uh, the you know papers that he was holding and he was arguing and many times the judge was saying this is not relevant and all but he was not losing that spirit of arguing and the spirit of like you know okay and what should i say next so he was maintaining a lot of calmness at the same time he was giving very uh, relevant information in the court related with the law and then he informed the development of law new law of uh, 2014 i think 2013 he said that it, it was 2013 14 then so then the judge said okay then oh, then she kept it on record so i was very thoroughly impressed so i happened to uh, try i tried to meet him but he had already left so next date i i just saw in the cause list what is the next date in the next date again the same person came with another one advocate was also there with him and uh, they both were arguing so then i was uh, you know sitting uh, there was no place to sit on that day i was standing actually to, uh, near the corner side and i was listening carefully and i was noting down i had a small diary with me uh, if anybody used to speak any you know superfluous expression i used to write it so that you know i could uh, you know try to relate with you know how to speak how to strike a conversation then even he was speaking he was arguing on another law point even that was taken by the judge so i thought that my goodness sir you know he is having a lot of files then i i, I tried to meet him i tried i tried to say that sir i am a, a law student so he said okay okay all the best to your career and he again so then i i requested him sir actually i uh, i also want to become a lawyer like you so he said to me you don't you must never become like me you must become like you a better version of you so what you can do is that you can just learn in the court it's good that you are in the court as a law student it is nice to see but you should not come in colorful dress you should uh, make sure that you come in uh, you know you, you wear the sober colors you may, uh, you know you put on that kind of uh, conduct that is appreciable so try to wear white and black as in there i said okay then afterwards uh, he said he again said that you know if you are interested in what what interests you the most so i said sir i don't know the law is so much so vast i cannot say what interests me but uh, criminal law is very interesting so then he said oh that is uh, that is also a very good thing but he said what are the other interests you don't have any other interest apart from that you don't have plan b plan c so then i i didn't understand what is plan b plan c so he said see what you are thinking right now may not be uh, your strength may not be there your strength will be some another sector then what you will do then i thought that yes he is right then i asked him sir can i do it he said i will give no money no money at all you will you have to take care of your own expense and uh, i will not take you in the uh, you know this place that place uh, with me or something you catch up with your speed 
I thought, okay, fine. The moment I completed my uh, examination, law exam, and then I met him again. So he said that that means you will not give up. He said you will not give up. You have all. So I had actually, uh, you know, guessed that you know this is my mentor. I have found my mentor. I want to learn from him. So then he said, look, there are many negative qualities also one person carries. You should not uh, absorb the negative qualities. You must only take the positive thing. What you can learn. And I don't hire anybody. I have my own skill. I have my own thing. So what I can do is I can impart some knowledge of the skill that I have. But some knowledge. I said, why not all? So he said, you cannot supersede me. So he said that I will give you some knowledge and let rest other thing you should learn from another mentor also. So this is how one and two mentors you should have. So then he gave me this idea that see when you become a lawyer, you always should become a trial advocate. You must never become a high court vakil. Try to understand the difference. See, in a trial advocate, you have uh, the opportunity to go through the proceedings of the court, the CRPC procedure, the rules and everything, all formality and technicalities are built there. So you are an artist. A trial advocate is always an artist. A high court advocate is an art critic. You know, that they will only criticize the judgment. They will try to find more deeper lines, deeper meanings. What are the different interpretations? So if you have not mastered your art, uh, being an artist, how can you expect that you can master or you can become a very good art critic? So for that, you should know at least art to become an art critic. So he said that the best advocate for anybody who to start in litigation, I'm talking about purely litigation, start with the lower courts. Start with the JMFC court, Mag Metropolitan Magistrate Court, Session Court. Then you become more... Uh, confident about the matter and you have many means you have access to a lot many clients new clients you potential clients in high court you never find potential clients because all of them are reserved you know there are all big advocates okay some some people may say them you know that oh all of them they have their bread butter tasty tasty marmalade kept so you are not there to touch them so and and people over there in high court they already have connection with many, many advocates. So only when new people entering in the uh, session court or a JMFC court or magistrate court, they are not aware. They need assistance. So you should try taking pro bono cases. If you take pro bono cases, you are very easily uh, identified. And then you start appearing in the matters. Then you have the confidence building. That thing enables you to become a very strong advocate in the long run. And then even a high court advocate cannot give that much technicalities and answer what only a trial advocate knows. So here trial advocate also gives assistance to high court advocate. If you ask any high court advocate, I'm not generalizing. Once again, I'm not generalizing my uh, understanding, but I'm just saying one thing that if you ask a high court advocate to make an application for bail in the session court, make an application right now or an exemption or anything. So, you know, tech, very small things like what should be the title, where should be the signature, what they will have issues. They will be not very comfortable because that is not their daily work. So they will try to seek assistance of another trial advocate to draw that. Okay, you tell you tell how the application is made, what is the prayer prayer they they might be knowing, but how it is to be written that knowledge they will not have. So only a trial advocate is actually an all-rounder advocate. A trial advocate is the only advocate who can give the direction and face of the case. The face of the case is made. So that is why he said that the high court building is very good. Okay, infrastructure is good. AC is there. And uh, people are there very, uh, you know, um, high, good presentation. Their, their language proficiency is very good. And you feel that because it is a high court, you will get a high paying clients. Which is, which is all a facade. You don't get a high paying clients in the high court, not even the bar room. That is why I'm saying don't sit in the bar room. Come out, take remand matters, take small, small matters, start with private criminal complaints. Give your vakalat nama, put there, stand there. See, don't demand money. Money will come to you in the form of client and it will be a, a treat that client will bring another client also. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, as a hmm. new lawyer, ma'am, uh, we should practice in uh, in each and every field, or we should focus on only on one field. Since we can say, uh, uh, as a criminal or divorce, uh, anything. I got. Ma'am, you can focus on that. Yeah, I'll focus on that. See, um, in the beginning, uh, you will be puzzled with lot many sectors of law. Uh, you will have to find out where which eases your personality which eases you which topic 
uh, uh, generates interest in you and then work so in the first two years you have to work everything it is just like llm first year you have to study everything in second year there is little more specialization so that is why i'm saying that in the beginning you can start see uh, there is a question which is a very remarkable question in the uh, college i have i have come across many students uh, asking me this that ma'am what to do further where to go which sector to, to get into my only answer is see if you have a flair of uh, drafting a flair of litigation then go for drafting arguing the matter stay in the court if you have a flair for academics then you must have minimum masters degree and that to above 55% to qualify you and then you must uh, go for research phd whatever and be in the college if you like corporate sector then you must be well versed with the writing draft uh, the drafting of uh, contracts in house uh, litigation like any jmfc uh, products there uh, there uh, you know uh, counsel if you want to be so that is a is in corporate sector or else you can try for government jobs you know government jobs is also a very uh, prestigious position uh, in the society you know if you have uh, if most of the people think of lal batti but uh, i am saying that it's a prestigious position that is why i request all of you to please read the more newspaper they read the more uh, you know information they gather the examination for upsc mpsc prepare yourself and uh, in in the meanwhile you are also working as a litigating officer you know litigate in litigation so you are not miss the bus you are actually working towards your you know uh, career so this way you should not lose your uh, interest from where you should try in which sector you are saying whether divorce law or divorce advocate or criminal lawyer or civil lawyer that will depend from time you know on time it will depend where your interest gets generated if you are only liking to appear for domestic violence matters or uh, you know cruelty against upon women or only those matters then you will be uh, you know then you will have to put your concentration only in that department then you will be uh, your potential will limit you know it will start getting limited and then maybe it is also helpful it will be a specialization only in that department but but then if you have a specialization of only one branch of law then you lose on the other branches also so your uh, you know expertise it then shifts so you have to first cultivate your formative years and then analyze the kind of practice that you have built the moment you do that you know there is an association of many lawyers networking people are aware that who is in this court who is in that court so try to put maximum uh, weightage in all the various sectors where you can come don't say no it's a challenge law is the challenge accept it even i did not know civil matter in a, how to take the civil case but i have accepted the brief why because i am doing the research now i have appeared i have started with the proceedings so initially i was not aware i used to be more comfortable with criminal law so the, you know it depends but still uh, the uh, flavor for uh, for criminal law and the love for criminal law is always there will always be there so that is what i have gathered my strength where i am good at this is what as per the individual students whoever they start their career with a, if you are the mentor I, i suggest a mentor will help you speed up but later on you only have to walk in the path mentor is always there to speed up if you are in any firm where you are thinking of monthly salary you will be drawing after uh, you know some days then uh, it is a total different ball game altogether then you cannot crib you cannot say that oh i should have been in litigation because litigation is very challenging and it is very demanding next few years you will be having less work but more money so initially don't think about money money alone but i know that there are uh, you know people who are you know leaving their jobs they are start, they are doing law some of them are coming after very long time your interest matters in the beginning there is lot of pressure on the students to earn money what they are bringing back at home that individually you can do that is when you take up small matters in the court in the session court in the uh, metropolitan magistrate court jmfc court filing karna ho application for applic making an application for uh, cancelling the bond all this application that you have to make you can charge uh, you know very little very little amount so from 11 to 530 you have a timing to make yourself available to the clients you know don't be at home don't be in the bar room and outside the court and have fun and just uh, some people i have seen they are wearing the band wearing the band and uh, the blazer right from station 
while they are walking towards if your office is nearby the you know uh, court then it is good then it is okay but when you are st- right starting from so far you are trying to show off and you know flaunt your uniform that is not the way you should uh, you know conduct yourself okay uh, ma'am after llb uh, do we need to pursue llm also or it is mandatory because we have seen most successful lawyers are not llm they are just llb so it's okay, okay. mandatory most, for llm most successful lawyers are what you have said ma'am uh, they are llb means we can see they are only llb degree there uh, most of them don't have the llm so is it mandatory to have llm degree also no it is not mandatory to have an llm degree in order to become a successful lawyer no it is totally not mandatory it depends on your uh, interest it depends some people carry on to study especially the girls after uh, llb they want a little they, they do some work either they do the ground work with uh, becoming an intern or being a junior advocate at the same time sometimes they take up llm also there can be many reasons why they take up llm study for more two years try to you know ex- uh, extend some more years <laughs> and the parallel do some diploma courses also you can yes, yes. You, that, it it uh, enhances yeah, very good it, yes very good you, it it, enha- it enhances your uh, knowledge you know and your capacity as a as a lawyer it really enhances so it's a very good thing so it's not mandatory to do llm only if you have to come in suppose you have a flair of teaching if you want to enter a college to teach law students just to de stress yourself or uh, you know just to regenerate to feel better or to be connected with the books then uh, llm is mandatory llm is mandatory net is uh, desirable if there is a net qualified candidate set ca- set qualified candidates and and marking differs you know sometimes you appear also but you are not able to get through that doesn't mean that if you do if you are not a net qualified you are not a good uh, lecturer but uh, a phd is uh, yes if you are not net set or something i think in year 2021 there was a notification in 2019 that uh, by year 2021 uh, a phd uh, means will become mandatory to teach in the law college means you must be a phd to teach in a law college or something like that but these notifications keep changing the only thing is relevant right now is if you really want to teach in a law college after llb suppose you think that no i am comfortable i want to start with teaching as a profession uh, so that i can uh, enhance my foundation for government service exam i can give government job exams because i will be connected with the books then you must study llm otherwise for lawyers junior lawyers junior advocates it is not at all necessary to be llm i have seen uh, many of the newcomers that mm. uh, instead of going uh, for a practice as a as a practicing lawyer they mm. try to join a corporate firm as a corporate lawyer so mm. what according to you is better to join a corporate firm and uh, practice the corporate law as a corporate lawyer or as an individual lawyer see as a corporate lawyer that you said what is more i'm sorry what is uh, a uh, more better to join a corporate law or as a litigation lawyer it depends on your uh, interest if you are interested not to appear in the court you don't want to appear in court you want to work in a company and you want to work as per the terms and conditions limited to that company and to the suppose if it is an fmcg product or if anything else any any, any other industry where you are given an induction program you know in the beginning when they take you they give you training and they uh, you know assign you that okay this will be your monthly income and this is what your work is so then what happens when you are joining a corporate firm you are waiving the litigation that means your confidence from litigation is going away and you are doing well in your corporate you are happy if you are happy by drawing salary and then you are getting because once you are in corporate then you will be retired so then you cannot after retirement restart with a litigation in this line you never retire you have the uh, plenty of work which is which all keeps coming only and in no uh, season uh, advocate is empty whereas in corporate if you have the inclination that you are comfortable there and you are confident because see in if you are a law uh, if you are a engineering student you have campus selection you get campus you get uh, easily uh, selected you have interview process but in a law you don't have any campus selection there are no comp- uh, associates coming to you if you see the market rate i don't want to even say that 
but it is so uh, you know sad it is a very it's a sorry state of affair i can say that what they are offering as a standard that this is the standard uh, income for a you know junior junior advocate it is very very disheartening that even pions are not even offered pions are given better so an office boy so but you cannot uh, you know still you cannot uh, uh, compare uh, the work that you are doing as a you know practicing advocate as a junior advocate and how much clients you can attract at a later stage because there are many briefs which which will come and which which uh, which will come only if you are available in the court during the court hours not going away from the court because that is your playground so if you are easily accessible by them matters will come and you will get the addiction of appearing in the court once you start with the remand matters small matters pr uh, private criminal complaint matters because at from right from early age uh, at the early stage of your career if you start appearing as advocate then for sure you will become a long standing advocate even for you know how to deal how to deal with different people you know how to get the matters and where to appear which court and and what time and how the management and flexibility everything is there with you in your fingertips but in corporate you are your uh, limitation is uh, sized down you know you are you they they will give you very good package i'm not denying that they will give you a very handsome salary they will tell you that this is the salary and this is at the end of the month you will be receiving so and so and um, okay we will give you induction program training and accordingly uh, like 9 to 5 job whatever it is you will be then then you, you, your personality will mold in that form here you are challenging your work that is you are doing pro bono causes pro bono cases more in the court so then you are becoming more accountable to the people around you at the same time you are enhancing your skill you know you're sharpening your skill so both are totally different ball game it depends on the student where what type of personality the student has and what risk capacity the student is willing to take in life in order to uh, you know uh, put a mark and make a you know push the push the limit push push the boundaries and uh, raise the benchmark it all depends on the student um, it was a very good session uh, we have already extended our time and i think uh, the time yeah, was question Uh, uh, yes yes uh, my question is means after if someone want to appear for magistrate exam by giving hmm. the mpsc so can you highlight on that okay that's a very very good question raj uh, some of the viewers uh, may like to know okay it's a very good question yeah. it's a very good question and judicial uh, examinations are also uh, equally relevant for advocates um, it is it gives you a better understanding uh, as a even as a judge uh, and and you are doing more service in this particular field you are not only just a advocate and lawyer you are trying to achieve that perfection and strike the balance as a judge it's a very uh, you know prestigious position with heavy responsibilities and uh, that is why uh, the eligibility uh, for appearing for jmfc exam is of 35 years still 35 years of age you can you are eligible and you must have all your llb the, this is what uh, the knowledge i have i have limited knowledge that all your llb exam throughout llb you should not have any kts at kts okay try to get maximum marks in the final semester more and if you are able to get llm also then it is good even without llm also still through ll if you are just plain llb then also you are entitled to write the exam judicial service exam Ma'am, this exam is some age bar for this exam yes 35 years uh, is the age bar but for uh, this is for open category uh, for uh, uh, reserve candidates it is 40 initially it was 38 now they have raised it to 40 and uh, and also one more thing one more thing uh, there has to be sufficient amount of practice immediately you are not entitled you need to have minimum 6 uh, 5 7 years of practice 7 years of good practice if you have you are also in fact uh, then eligible for having uh, this uh, coming uh, as a pp to, for becoming for qualifying as a public prosecutor assistant public prosecutor minimum 7 to 10 years of practice is needed and uh, um, for jmfc 5 years is also sufficient it's not a problem but they they expect you to have more practice so that you have more sound knowledge and expertise with you and you must have the knowledge of uh, regional language 
Marathi. You must have the knowledge. You must have sound uh, understanding of Marathi. If you are not very good with it, then you have to learn Marathi. <laughs> Because the first two exams is okay. There will be MCQs and all that. But you must know general. See, you are in Maharashtra now, and you must know Marathi. I th I'm not forcing people that everybody has to know and all that. I don't want to get political. but i'm saying that uh, you must uh, because see this is law you are conversing with people how you will know their problems so it is uh, nice that uh, you know you should have good command over the regional language and uh, all the best whoever wants to appear for this exam it's good ma'am one more last thing ma'am uh, oh. ma'am you told that after 7 to 10 years of experience we can become pp so for that we have to give any exam or directly we can become a pp there are notifications in the newspapers it comes uh, okay. and even the court even the high courts they have their uh, you know um, uh, their um, uh, there is a, a link uh, it comes that uh, you know this is if they are uh, uh, seeking for new uh, aspirants who are willing to join and what are their they, they of course there is exam there is interview then there is training uttan there is a place called uttan uh, there, there is a training also and all these things you learn and even in fact training is more for the judges actually how to become a judge for pp uh, initially it is uh, related with how many cases you have you know been given and how many cases you are appearing and how is your uh, argument and your means your willingness to proceed for the state of maharashtra because you will be working for the state of maharashtra as a public prosecutor so you need to take in account all the cases right, mokka case tada and you know other disruptive activities and everything criminal mein bahut kuch rahega poxo everything will be there so all that knowledge is required so for that you need to have sound uh, experience in the court and that comes from uh, appearing in matters when you are a advocate you should appear for matters which are sensitive matters uh, especially complainant side matters then you are able to become uh, you know you have high chances that you will be uh, you know uh, absolved in the in the court especially when you become empaneled advocate you have higher chances greater chances ma'am uh, uh, yeah, raj any question no 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 ma'am <laughs> um, it was a very good session uh, we haven't thought of like we'll be asking so many questions and uh, our so many doubts will be cleared so with this i, I am also i am also very obliged that uh, you know i could do some part of my duty Uh, i could uh, you know uh, like uh, being a practicing advocate and uh, you know i'm seeing many students uh, what they speak how they interact with each other outside the college also so i feel uh, humbled i feel very honored and i'm very i, I extend my sincere thanks to uh, sandhya doke doke madam for uh, you know coming up with this thought and idea of uh, bringing this kind of topic and discussion for all the people all law enthusiasts and uh, you know new lawyers so it's uh, really remarkable of her to you know uh, think about this because such topics are never discussed so openly and yes, they don't uh, these topics are uh, mostly hush hush topics so it we have discussed in public domain and i really thank you also arun for and rajkiran for uh, assisting and uh, getting I mean, the actually, connection actually we are honored to have you on this platform and uh, <laughs> to gain so much of knowledge and information Uh, now i would like to invite rajkiran jadhav our uh, president of student council to conclude this session webinar uh, thanks sir ma'am uh, it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks i on the behalf of the student law council at siddharth law college accept a hearty vote of thanks to the honorable advocate komal sena who blessed us with her presence and took out valuable time of her busy schedule Ma'am, we especially like the one where you explain the court rules and means how to handle the client and what to and what not to be observed from the seniors. The way you explain the art of advocacy was exemplary. And ma'am, you explain the difference between the corporate and the practice lawyer. It was amazing, ma'am. Uh, Thank you so much, but ma'am, uh, I also like to wish my express gratitude to our principal, Ms. Sandhya Doke, for providing encouragement and support. and giving us the opportunity to organize the event heartily thanks to all the viewers and participants for joining us and uh, making this webinar successful ma'am this lecture certainly benefited us and you have the breadth of knowledge and you are the expert in this field giving your time really helped to make it a success 
we look forward to having you again in our next webinar your presence here definitely enrich this lecture and for this we remain grateful thank you ma'am thank you thank you very very much okay thank you all the participants yes, and i hope uh, in this uh, pandemic or pandemic covid 19 era you all be home be safe and jai hind be safe jai hind